Hello, everybody. Well, um, what I wanted to do was not working. Can anybody see me now? Hey, look at that. Good. So let's see if I can uh, change this around. Go on the fly. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Welcome to a live. As you can see, it is definitely live. I had a whole program all set, and for some reason, on YouTube did not want to connect. So let's get on with this thing. Let us go to a share screen of what I wanted to do. So welcome to My Mount Models. Thank you. Um, our kits are much better than our connection to the YouTube. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> Everybody can hear me? Somebody respond, please, before I move on. I have to listen while on the road. Okay, good. All right, thank you, Robert. Dan, thank you. Okay, all right, let's get on with the show. Uh, select. And we're going to pivot here and get up to... Um, a lot of people have been asking about how um, my crown transfer was created and uh, and the base and the waterfront and everything. Um, I'm going to break this into two lives. Next week will go a lot smoother, I guarantee. Um, and the first one today, I'm going to cover the base. Um, and also, here you go. Here's uh, me scoping out and um, designing and shaping and, and sizing the base here. And um, as you can see, it's on two inch blue foam. That was a tough decision because that's all I had around the house. Uh, if your harbor is gonna be shallower or um, deeper, you can always pile these up. You can use one inch foam, you can use gator foam, whatever you have around. You can even, even use plywood if you wanted to build it up that way. And once I had a, my, I was happy with the location of the building, I started carving and uh, shaping the piece. Um, and you can see where the little cutout is. Rach, does my cursor show up on the screen? Yep. Okay, excellent. Um, the, cut, the cutout here is where the little pier, where Finn's um, boat repair goes. Over here on the left, that's where I, I'm starting to shape where a lot of the rocks will be. And then all along here, this open side here is the actual uh, pier, or I'm sorry, the bulkhead. Um, the wooden bulkhead is actually all included in the kit. And here again, I'm sizing up where the track's gonna end up going. Uh, the pieces on the side of the track, you can see here, they are included in the kit and starting to uh, carve in a little more of the terrain and everything. We'll scroll through some of this stuff real quick. There's fins. That's what sits on the pier. Um, here's some here's some pier information here. I'm going to be doing some of the, um, the pilings and stuff that you see here. I'll show you how I weather those and color those in a little bit. Uh, the coloring of some of the stains and the paints and the uh, MIG ammos and all, all that fun stuff. And the docking, it, you can see I'm starting to get some of the moss. And over here on the, this is actual pier. This is scribe siding, scribe material. And once you have your, your beams in, you can actually use a needle point if you want, if you're really crazy, and do it individual boards, or I use a pounce wheel. And I got a set. Uh, at a hobby shop or a, a show, train show. I think there's three different sizes. You can use the pounce wheel and kind of match the type of boards and the and uh, decking that you have for your, the siding for your house, the decking on your, um, on your docks like this one here, adding railings, 
let's get past some of this stuff here and get there oh, there's a sneak peek of some future stuff and let me bring up down further where I got to this one here and let's share stop sharing and we'll go to the different screen here you can see some of the pilings let me see if I can turn this around for you guys this is the different steps of the, of the weathering a lot of the uh, the gray here you'll see uh, is stains from hunter line and from Vertero by best trains it's a mix um, you're going to use a uh, razor saw a hobby saw and kind of rough up the wood dowels they're all come they come in the kits also uh, you're going to start putting on mosses and actually use some of the rusts and uh, the darker rust colors to, to color some of the barnacles. I'll show you that in a little bit. And next week we'll get into the water and the coloring and all that fun stuff. But tonight I'm going to just kind of concentrate on how I, I weathered all the woods and all that stuff. So let's move the camera over. I had a whole setup with multiple cameras and it decided to not cooperate. Give me a second to change the view. If you hear me say Rach, that's my daughter. She's kind of helping out here. If anybody has any questions, if you guys see anything particular that you want to um, stop sharing there. Is that pretty good? All right, there. That's not bad. I'm not going to be able to zoom in on this camera. This is my web camera. Um, and if you have any particular questions that you want to see done, if you have any questions on uh, the coloring, any particular paints, uh, what I use for the barnacles, you'll see what I do that. It's pretty simple. It's just crushed ballast, actually. Um, so what comes into kits, you'll get lengths of wood dowels. This is a quarter inch wood dowel. You get eighth inch wood dowels. You don't have to use with dowels. Um, you can even, even use these little pins. They come kind of already textured a bit there. That's just uh, doweling pins if you just want some short pilings. Uh, you're going to be using razor saws like this, a hobby saw. They usually come in different um, tooth. You have fine, you have coarse, you can get all different ones. And you're just going to rough up. What you can see in this piece here, hopefully you can see it, is I roughed up this one side and this side's smooth. So I'm going to stain that real quick with some of the light gray. Um, in this particular one, we're going to use Hunter Line. We have, it's called Light Gray. Imagine that. And the Vitero, you have aged barn wood, very similar color. This one's a little bit more blue. Uh, what I always say with my weathering, I like to do layers. Build up scenery, build up structures, build up even trains. Layers of trains and the weathering on, on locomotives and freight cars and stuff. It's all about layers and building that that look you're not going to get it in one foul swoop you got to get multiple brushes dirty simple just take your your saw rough up your dowel a little bit you can even use uh leave some of the fuzz on there because you can always take it off later and you can either you can take this you can take your brush and you can brush it on but if you want a, a decent coat, I usually grab a long tweezer and you pray that you don't get it all the way into the bottle and it falls. So you take that. I have a whole bunch of clamps. Um, you can even use the pinch, pincher tweezers and stuff like that and just let it Oops. Let it uh, 
dry for a little while. You can use a hair dryer. Always keep a hair dryer close. I have one down in my basement shop. I have one here up at the uh, up here in the, my um, office shop, and you're gonna let that dry. You can see here some of the finished. Let's take the camera. Hopefully, I don't get you too seasick. And you can see the light gray coloring up top. Up here and up here. Uh, this one, you can see some of the, uh, the bluer gray. That's when I layered on some of the Vitero aged barn wood on top of the light gray. And you build up those colors. If you look at some of the uh, waterfront scenes in real life, um, you'll see the water levels and the tides rising and, and falling. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish here um, is to get multiple colors. And, and up at the top, the pilings are going to be kind of dry and they're sitting in the sun. They got the, the salt, uh, ocean salt air and stuff dried on them. And they're going to look really gray and, and sun bleached pretty much. Lower, you're going to get more and more moisture. You're going to get more and more greens and darker colors. That's where you're going to start getting in to as a, a Vallejo. This is a water-based uh, mossy green color. They call it, they say it's for green vehicles, but the paint doesn't know if you put it on something else. Uh, you got this one here. You got your ammo. That's a slimy grime light. That's a really nice color. It's a bright color. You think, oh my gosh, bright green. Um, but for this type of stuff, algae on the sides of buildings looks great. Here's another ammo color. This is an oil-based one also. This is slimy grime dark. So you got the light and dark of grime and slime. Good stuff. It's like a recipe from the back of the McDonald's or something. This show is not sponsored by McDonald's. Um, once you get that on, let me get the hair dryer. Sorry about the sound real quick, and I will dry this piling real quick. All right, hopefully your ears are not bleeding at this time. And you're going to start adding on some other um, stains. Again, there's a hunter line that's a dark brown. You can use uh, murky brown from that wonderful show from the 80s. No, I'm sorry, murky brown, not murphy brown. She should be a sponsor for that, I guess. Maybe we can talk to Vitero. She can be a spokesperson for their stain and let's say this is a really tall piling so i would just yeah let's have a little bit more control i'm going to grab some of the brush and brush this on so i have a little bit more control than just the overall gray color and you're going to do start at the bottom half and kind of darken that up and you want to make it random. You can even have it like touch a, a real big blob at the bottom and you'll see it wick up the piling, um, up into the wood grains and stuff. And it makes it look really natural as opposed to when you even brush it on. Um, you can do long streaks, wide streaks, and you can let that dry. We're going to rush this process. So I'm going to be more like the Bob Ross tonight and kind of go through the steps really quick. Again, another layer you're going to build up with some of the hunter line dark browns, and this is even darker. So you're going to have this right along where your water line is, way at the bottom. Sorry, I can't get any closer. Like I said, my, my setup that I have uh, was not connecting to YouTube for some reason, although I went through about you know, 15 or 20 tests with no problem until I went live and there was a problem. Thanks, YouTube. So if you can see this, try and keep this as steady as I can. Get it off the white napkin because... All righty, thank you, Rach. My, my uh, stream mod, my daughter Rachel is uh, helping me out here. So you have your light grays. Um, you have your um, aged barn woods, 
your um, murky browns and then your dark browns and you kind of kind of build that you know multi-layered tides coming in and out and building it up so now we can start adding on some of the um, grimes the slimy grimes shake these up a bit again Actually, wait, before we start the slimy grimes, I'm sorry. Another thing that I like to do is to use, you know, the Craft Smarts, um, Apple Barrels, anything that's like a, a gray color. This is kind of like a light to medium gray. We'll do a quick shot of this. And you're just going to hit the tops of the gray. This is almost like a dry brush. This is a dry brush. Um, very little paint and you're just going to kind of hit the tops of the green where the saw tooth didn't get to. Even you can get into the dark and hit some of that. And when you do that, it's, it's like a, a highlight, except you're using a light gray instead of whites or a beige or something. And that just adds yet another layer of texture. See if you can see that or not. Um, and that will add yet another layer of texture. One thing that I like to do with most of my painting, especially with the craft paints, because they're all water-based, uh, is washes. Um, I did this one a little heavy straight out of the bottle because I wanted to have it show up on the camera a little bit better. But if you have extra time, instead of doing one heavy thing, take a little bit of water, and really thin that down so you have a light gray wash and you kind of build that up and it may take two or three actual applications but you can hit it with the hair the uh, hair dryer again and these thin layers i do this on my walls on my buildings the clapboard and you know the uh, board on boards and everything and um Building up layers gives you that depth that you can actually see into the building almost with the, with the amount of layers and you can see the actual um, clapboard standing out. And so it just adds so much more realism and depth to any, pretty much any surface. It's almost like watercolors. Um, let's hit that. Hold your ears, everybody. Let me hit it real quick with a hair dryer. Any questions, Rach? All right. And I'm going to have to get a little bit smaller brush. Let's move on to this one here. Actually, we're going to use this one because this one's dry and it's more, this one I use more for the, uh, the watercolors, the acrylics and stuff. This one here, uh, a little bit more beat up and worn. I use that for enamels. And I'm gonna add some of that slimy grime light from ammo. And you don't have to dip it in, you just need a little bit. So I usually take right off the cap. And when I look at, here, you know what? Let me show you the model. Hello, everybody. Let me go over here. Oops, unplug that. And again, this is here's the actual model. Here's Crown Transfer. Um, this is available on our website. This is our first limited run mod model kit. It is uh, 150 kits are being made. They are selling quite well. And uh, there are some left. So if you want one, head to mymountmodels.com and look at tra Crown Transfer and all our other products. Um, this is a little bit more advanced kit. So uh, you'll need 
a little bit more skills. You might not want to do this for your first craftsman structure kit. And I'm not sure why the Harbor Master let this boat in, so I'm going to get him out of the way. This kit is a nice one. Uh, this is from Seaport Model Works. And uh, Bruce Nickerson, Seaport Model Works, does a great job. This is one of their older versions of this kit. Um, this is all resin. They used to do everything on resin. From my understanding, there are newer kits, which I haven't gotten yet. I do want a couple extra boats, though. Uh, the hulls are still resin, but a lot of the... Um, the drive at port houses and everything, whatever you want to call them, um, they are all done laser boards and everything. Might have like a mix, uh, like a hybrid almost of laser, laser cut parts and resin. So this is what I'm talking about here. Um, so here you can see how the water line, you got the dark, dark, wet water down below and you're building up lines across you know, all the boards and everything. And at the top, you can kind of see where that sea foam, if there's like real high tide or something like that, or something splashes up um, and it dries and gets the dark light greens, like that really bright green. You got the, the darker greens. Uh, you can see it here. Um, this concrete bulkhead, they are not included in the kit because basically that is the blue foam directly painted. So that is your blue foam right there. That, all I did was score a couple lines to make it look like concrete slabs. And I painted all the same exact colors right onto that blue foam with, with some concrete color. My favorite concrete color, I'll show you when I get back to the workbench, is um, suede. I forget the, the company name. I'll tell you that in a little bit. But suede is the best concrete color I, I've come across. And then I built up my layers from there. Um, and you can see here that's actually the the water depth gauge so there's been a couple high tides here that have been a little bit higher than they expected probably storms rolling in and stuff um, once you have all your color layers on then we can add start adding uh, the barnacles and then painting some of the barnacles so that you got the old ones and the and the fresh ones the grays are the old ones and the brown ones are the fresh ones um, I painted all these boards, all the, the wood bulkheads, all the pilings, uh, even these concrete um, piers that I painted right on my workbench and laid them all parallel to each other or in line basically. So I can get all the, the lines because you want your water level not going all over the place. You want it to stay level. So let's go back to the workbench. Hello again, everybody and start adding some of those lines to build up. And my point in the right direction, here we go. Clamp my temporary camera in place. Yes, I will show you some of the new 3D um, the resin detail parts and stuff that I have coming out. I designed a lot of new ones, a whole bunch of new ones for this kit, crown transfer. So some of those will be released. I will show those in a little bit. That's the secret red solo cup here, um, a little bit later. And you can, you'll can you be able to find those over the next uh, few days or so uh, on our website. Got some neat ones in there. All right, so again, you want to try and you might want a, a story board um, where you have your um, a piece of wood. Let's say this here. That's your that's your um, bulkhead boards. It's scribe sighting. It's the wide scribe, and that represents your bulkhead boards. Make a scrap extra piece and have where your water lines are, so you can use that as your reference for your pilings for your main bulkhead walls for your concrete walls and then that will tell you and keep you true to what your um, what your water levels are actually we can you know what let's use this piece here we'll use this piece it's bigger I can hold it easier for the camera on this piece I scribed a little bit with the saw this is just um, I think the the scribe 
boards are about an eighth wide. This is exactly what comes in with the kit. I used a saw and scribed a little bit more texture into there. And all I did was stain it a little bit with the light gray and the Vitero H barn wood. That's all that's on here. Um, and you'll be able to see before. These mats, actually, I was using this. I laid it right on there and you have all your lines and it kind of helps you you can use your NMRA ruler if you want and keep things level. Believe me, this little extra effort of keeping it level, when you want, when you have it actually on your layout and that waterline really comes across and it shows up and the people look around your harbor and they're seeing the waterline not you know going up and down. Uh, it really ties the whole scene together. So what I did, I started with a, a little bit of line. I'll just tap that on. And I did one of the water levels of the water rising. This might be you know, high noon or high tide or whatever. And then I'm just doing a couple little streaks below of the same color. But you don't want a solid streak. You want like every few boards. And so that you have that little bit of random color. And then, since I have the enamel brush out still, you can go right to the other grimes. This is a little bit darker grime. It's a darker green. And you can put another level right on there, right below. Again, staying true to your storyboard or... Uh, you know, your, your lines on your on your workbench. And again, pull pull that down a little bit. And again, that's another layer of, of weathering. And it's starting to build up. Let me clean my brush for a second. All right, um, let me throw on some of that dark brown so you kind of get that idea just below. A little bit wider brush, and this is a water-based brush that I paint with because it's a water-based stain, or actually alcohol-based stain, but lots of water in it. Just for looks, we'll do that for the broadcast. Again, there you go. This is a little bit high up top, but you can have a, a harbor that has a lower um, harbor scene. Everything good? Alrighty. Um, the lighting. Mm -hmm. Can you see that, everybody? Um, so you got your layers built up. And then at the very bottom, you can use, this is a streaking grime for interiors by uh, Ammo. Streaking grime for interiors, Ammo MIG. This is a, uh, again, another enamel. But it's a uh, medium to dark brown. And this is where it's going to get kind of wet and soppy at the bottom here. Where the water is almost always there. And I like to use a brush that's a little beat up for some of this stuff like that because then you get a little textured edge to that. So again, you got your high tides. The water rarely gets up there. It might be a storm level. They got a little bit more greens. Um, you know, normal tides. And then it gets darker and darker as you go down further down the boards. Um, so that is some of the basic techniques that I used 
to stain the main bulkheads. Again, I use that for the pilings. Um, the woods, the different woods will take the stains differently because just like in real life, you're gonna have the, the piling might be pine and they might've used, for some reason they used oak on the bulkheads. So it's gonna take the, the colors differently. So you're gonna have lighter and darker, but it'll still be the same family tones of paints and stuff. So it all kind of, it'll end up tying together. Like this is a leftover from the diorama that I did months ago. And it still has the same color palette as the one I just did a couple minutes ago. Once that's all settled, if you want, you can go back and stain a couple individual boards. Let's go a little murky brown. For some reason, let's say some of them, the creosote uh, held on for dear life and it's a little bit darker, a little bit darker board. You can go back and individually straight down, kind of hit some random ones and it doesn't have to be the whole board either. I always use photo references for uh, when I'm painting, I'll just Google up a wood bulkhead and that's how I get a lot of my colorations. So there you go. That added another layer. And I just hit the top to bottom. You don't have to do so much. You can if you want. It'll still show up a little. You know, just hit some random boards there. And it was just a little bit of leftover murky brown. And it darkened a couple little areas. But mainly the top was a little bit gray for my liking. And I just darkened some random boards. And again, not the whole board even. Just some, you'll look at a bulkhead and you'll see some of the grain of whatever timber they're using. It's real dark green and you'll have light gray right next to it. And then, and then you know, the bottom third of it will be another dark stripe of, uh, you know, a, a wood grain or something. So then once that's all dry, let that dry overnight. Um, yeah, clean that brush off. Let me hit it with a hair dryer real quick. And for um, adhering the glue, can you hear me, everybody? Am I coming across, Rach? Yeah. All right. Um, I, I'll either use um, a wood glue for all my kits, any kind, even other people's kits. Uh, I've been using Type Bond 2 as the main glue for almost everything in a, in a Craftsman structure kit. I like the type bond too, as opposed to the original type bond, because this one's an interior and exterior. So you can throw water at this and all the paints and all the weathering and stuff that we do. It's a lot of moisture and everything. This will hold on better and hold your kits together better than the original regular type bond. Even if you use like an Elmer's wood glue or some one other brand of wood glue, as long as it's an interior or exterior, you'll get better results with this than if you use just an interior glue. If you're building fine furniture and stuff, sure, use the interior glue, but you're dealing with craftsman structure kits um, with our moistures and paints and all that fun stuff. Um, but for the barnacles, you can, you can use your glues. You can, I like Aliens Tacky Glue. Let me just put a little dot. Look how quickly our workbenches get dirty. It's amazing, isn't it, guys and ladies? So there's a little dot of um, wood glue. You can use a toothpick. You can use a, a T-pin or some kind of pin. Um, I like to use these. These are the little handles left over from, you know, those micro brushes that you can get. Helpful hint, definitely get your micro brushes in bulk packs from Amazon. Um, some of the other companies out there, the hobby companies will take these and you will get 10, 15 or 20 for however many dollars and dollars. Uh, you can get a pack of a hundred. I got 400 different size brushes. Um, there's four different sizes of a hundred each, but let's say that. I, th I think I, it was 
10, $15, something like that, maybe. Uh, I still, I'm going through them and I got them years ago. They last forever. So this is a little handle. I like to apply glues with this. It's a nice fine point. They even have finer points, like the white colored ones and stuff are even finer. But you're just gonna take your tacky glue or whatever glue you decide, and you're gonna put random stripes down near the bottom. Even if it's big and globby, that's even better. Um, you want huge globs, but big enough for barnacles to hold on to. So this is gonna be your barnacle farms, basically. Barnacle Bob. This is where he lives in his family. So you want some kind of high, some kind of low. You can do one that kind of creeps up. The ones that are gonna creep up and they're high, that's where you're gonna keep it, the natural gray color for um, the ballast. I use a gray ballast. And I've ran it through an old, like a coffee grinder or a blender of some sort I had to get it even finer on some stuff. And I use that a lot on my dioramas uh, because some of the, the ballast, maybe, you know, main line, big stuff like that, it's good. But for my liking, um, it's a little bit too big. So I just use, uh, where's my container here? Ballast go. Here it is. So here's a container ballast. You can see there's some real chunky stuff in there. There's some fine stuff in there. For barnacles, you're gonna use it all. Uh, for when I'm laying track in my dioramas, I use some of the coarse stuff in some areas. I'll use some of the fine stuff. Um, but you're just gonna take this and plop it right on, right onto your aliens, technically aliens. And you're just piling it on. Gently press it on and dump it off. That easy. Scoop up that extra stuff, that's valuable. Um, I was born with a silver spoon, as you can see. Unfortunately, it's only for ballast. Let's get rid of that. Ballast and barnacles, I guess. And let's see if we can catch the light. There you go. You can kind of see how those barnacles are built up. There's big chunky spots, there's some thin spots, but you still have all that texture there. This one I would let dry because um, you're going to brush on some darker stuff at the very bottom to represent the, the live barnacles instead of the, the dead ones that are kind of like mixed in and especially at the top of those peaks of uh, barnacle clusters. Um, but for our purposes, I'm going to rush it. That was a real quick rush. And I use the same streaking grime for interiors. This, I noticed, does really well. You could use other browns if you have some acrylics. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing here. Um, like this one here, that's a craft paint, it's called nutmeg. That would probably do very similar color. Uh, you can even take multiple colors. There's a light taupe. I would probably take a darker brown, maybe a light taupe, kind of mix them together a little bit, but you don't have to use what I'm showing you. This is, I have a variety pack of stuff. Um, but get good results with this. Kind of has a slight shine to it almost, even though it's a supposed military paint. And here's my enamel brush again. And this, you know, I am going to get a little bit heavier paint going on here. Everything good on this, on the screen there, Rach? Any questions? And you're just going to, especially due to the bottom, and you're just going to hit the, the little bottom. You can tap it here and there, I'm barely touching this. This is almost lighter than dry brushing, basically is. And I'm just tapping some of the tops of that barnacle. You can have some ambitious ones that are a little bit higher, but you don't want to go all the way to the very top, because they're usually the dead ones. That's a uh, seagull, seagull fodder there. 
And yes, we will have seagulls available on our website soon. So that's pretty much it. If you have a bulkhead wall done fairly quick, um, yes, it's a variety of different colors, different manufacturers of paints and stuff like that. But to get a pretty decent convincing wall, it's very simple, very easy. The main thing I can say is build up your layers and keep your lines straight because water rises all at the same level pretty much, and especially in a harbor. All right, let me rinse this off so I don't lose my good crunchy enamel brush. So again, you'll have your bulkhead walls, you'll have your pilings, same techniques, same, let's see if you can catch that. I have a, on the pilings, I usually do really chunky. I might even do a couple layers of barnacles and build it up really good, especially at the base, right where it's hitting the water levels. Um, there you go. Catch that, I guess. Uh, sorry about the bad camera. I, I had my good camera all hooked up and had to completely bypass all that stuff. And I'm strictly on my webcam right now. Supposedly 4K, but I can't zoom in and stuff. Uh, also, with the pilings at the top, you can see it's not perfectly cut. As I actually took my knife and took a little couple nicks out of them. And if I had a hammer, I'd hammer all day long. And I actually tapped, bang, 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 hit it like a piling, a pile driver was actually piling this thing into the ground. And it's almost like peening over the top. And that's where the seagulls like to sit. Speaking of seagulls, again, they're available soon uh, on the website, but you can glue seagulls on top. I'll show you that on our diorama. You can see it on our photos on our website, mymountmodels.com. Uh, you can take a couple little dots of white white paint and a little gray mixed in or whatever and just dab it on there and that's uh the seagull remnants i guess you would say let's be we're on public tv here so keep it clean kids um seagull poop you can add that to the top of the pilings or anywhere else you're going to see seagulls sitting it could be on your, your rooftops um eyeing up your ice cream cone on the boardwalk wherever you need it uh, so that's our pilings, that's our bulkheads, all the colors, I'll quickly pass by, uh, go back here, so you got your stains, hunterline stains, light gray and brown, Vitero, we use aged Warrenwood and murky brown, oops, murky brown, um, we used a couple different pans and grays and stuff for any kind of craft paints. Uh, a variety of different um, military paints, ammos, and uh, even rust effects, slimy grimes, light grimes, dark grimes. Uh, here's one I forgot. Um, this one is called rainwater effects, and that is a really thin whitish, real light gray white color. And you can build that up on your wood and it gives it that salty looking dried waterfront scene color to it almost it, it leaves rain streaks basically but it looks like it's really built up that's a good one um again use your your wood glues or your aliens tacky glue and hello everybody um we're going to go over here again and you can see, try and level that camera a bit. Uh, Harbor Master let that boat in again. Let me get that out of the way. There we go. So you can see all the dark colors, the layers. This is a, a horizontal board that's stained the same way, pretty much. It's a light gray stained board on top. The bottom was, again, light gray, but then most of it is covered up with the the mosses and the darker murky browns and dark brown colors and stuff like that. You got all your 
uh, barnacles along the bottom. They're real dark colors. And you can even see some in the boards in between the little the grooves of the, um, the boards. They are all have like little dark lines going up, like the water is wicking up inside of there. Uh, there's some of your seagulls that you see there. You can see some of the tops. They're all peened over. Some have dark hole circles in the top. Uh, some of them have light light circles on top there. There's a seagull. Can you see that, Rich? Is that coming in? Let me see if we can focus that a little bit better. Yeah. So, um, what time do we have here? 10, 12. We're going to go a little bit longer because uh, we started late. Thank you, YouTube. Uh, and once you have your pilings in, your, you glue your bulkheads on, you glue your cross horizontal beams on, uh, determine the spacing of your pilings. Uh, sometimes they're random, sometimes they're evenly spaced. You have extra ones for like boat bumpers and stuff. You can see here. Uh, this one here is kind of protecting the whole corner. That's about three of them tied together. You can kind of see rope and everything. You can see much better pictures right on of our on our website there of some of these scenes here. Uh, tires tied on with uh, rope. All those ropes and tires that are included in the kit. Uh, basically anything wood that you see, all the details that's all included in the kit, all the um, the dock uh, decking and stuff like that. Uh, people are not included, but birds, the, we include uh, some of our pallets that you can assemble, all the detail parts, the crates, you have scales, um, you have this track bumper here, that is based off of a Pennsylvania railroad track bumper. And uh, I drew that up in the 3D CAD and printed that up and they'll be available soon. Uh, our crane, the gantry crane, all the 3D parts and wood and we have titchy nut bolt uh, washer castings. That's all available. All the lines are, are included in the kit, um, the motors, I drew all it, all this stuff up in, in CAD. Uh, maybe one time, one night, I'll do a, a live on some of the um, fire escapes and everything there. I definitely want to do a live next week. We'll be working on the actual coloring of the water, how I use the water, what I did with the water, what the materials are. Uh, that's the, one of the main things that a lot of people ask is, how'd you get that water looking so good? Well, it's pretty simple, really simple. Um, that'll happen next week. Um, let me show you a couple of the uh, 3D. Hello, everybody. Um, the 3D details that are going to be coming out. Let's get the red solo cup. Uh, that there is my on camera there. there. All right, so that is a set of tires. These are the same tires in our kit. You get to uh, tie to the, the bulkhead there with the ropes. The ropes are included. We're coming out with, let me just dump out this smorgasbord of details here. This isn't everything you get. This is just some of the ones that I'm putting out. There's your assorted crates there. That's some um, wooden crates that you get all over the docks and everything. You can use those on other models. They're, they'll be available. Here's some of the seagulls. You got one flying seagull, six, is it six? I'm sorry, nope, it's uh, eight seagulls and four or six pigeons. I forget how much of this. Uh, I have it on my website, you can see that. But pigeons, seagulls, flying and sitting, lots of sitting ones. Um, I'm going to be putting out this loading dock that I designed. Uh, these are actually individual bricks that I designed here. This top, I actually took an image of a cracked loading dock and imported it into my 3D program and extrapolated the, the texture right off. So that's actually a true cracked loading dock uh, surface there. I'm debating about putting this one out. 
uh, I'll probably just put it out anyway if people don't even want it. This is all the parts to that gantry crane, minus all the wood, and you know. But these are all the 3D parts that are included to build up that gantry crane, all the couplings and where all the hooks are and the motor itself and everything. So I'll probably put that one out. It's a little separate thing. Um, a lot of people have been asking for these. These. This is a um, uh, the loading dock um, plates when the trucks back up, and you can actually um, put those on to your loading dock. I, these. I've used tons of these when I was working in pharmaceutical in the warehouses and stuff. So pretty familiar with that. You can see some of those in our picture. There's that bumper I was showing you guys. That one. Uh, that was based off of a Pennsylvania Railroad design. I needed mine a little bit shorter. The Pennsylvania Railroad design comes out just a little bit further out the back. It's a little bit more pointy. Uh, these are popular. A lot of people have asked about these. These are lobster buoys. You'll get a, a few of those in the pack when I put those on our website. This is some life preservers and uh, cleats for on the on the loading docks on the piers. I mean, um, for time with the boats and everything. So you got life preservers, cleats. It'll be available. This one I really like. Uh, I'll probably show this on the, the building real quick. These are those um, stars that you see on the outsides of um, masonry buildings that hold up the second floor. They're like star bolts. And it keeps the, the bolts from pulling through the wall, but they make them the stars. It just, I guess, goes way back in the Victorian times when they used to care about the way things looked. But it still carries over. They still make them in star bolts. Uh, a dumpster. That came out really good. I like the dumpster one. That's included in the kit also. Uh, coming out with my scales, I have a, let's see if you can kind of see that one or not. Well, it's not going to stand up in my hand, but uh, a pedestal scale and a platform scale. This is still on the 3D um, sprues, I guess you'd say. It's, it's uh, a little delicate, but once you cut it out, it's a really nice looking model. So that's some of the 3D stuff that's going to be coming out soon. And um, that is pretty much it for uh, this evening and I'll get a little bit more into let me see if there's any more pictures that I missed because my whole presentation was thrown off um, let me share my screen here oops yep well, I'm gonna be sharing stuff Jeff hey Jeff hey doing Um, that's our share screen. Uh, that is pretty much going to cover it. Sorry about the little hiccup in the beginning, guys. I promise next week will be smoother. And you know, here are. Let me share this screen real quick. This is, you're going to be able to see some of the painted up pails. Uh, here's some of the lobster buoys. Uh, you can see a preserver over here on the on the left side. Dude is not available. That's like probably a prizer or something like that, or Wathers or something. Woodland Scenics. I don't know. Um, there's, you can, okay, in this picture you can see here really well the barnacles and the different colors and the pilings and everything. You can see the rust from the, uh, the titchy nut bolt washer castings, uh, the ladder and the, the boat dock here. That's all included in the kit. Um, there's a cross buck that's included in the kit. These are the colors that I use on the copper roof. We'll do that in a separate night maybe. I'll do a, a simple live um, and to show you the copper painting. That's a real simple technique, but it's very effective. And these are some of the colors that I use on the loading dock and the stone walls. Um, there's that suede I told you about. This is my favorite color for the base of 95% of my concrete, basically. Um, A 
Okay, here's some details. Uh, this is one of my original castings here, the 3D resin actually printed, not casting. Uh, center blocks and block boxes with the trash can attached to it. This is our wooden pallets. They're available also. This is that loading dock that I was showing you with the, the crack surface. That was actually right off of a, uh, a real, the real surface of a, a cracked loading dock I took a picture of. Um, there's the colors that we're showing you to paint in your loading docks. Uh, some of the wood uh, crates that are available, more pallets that I have. Of course, uh, all the rope and the, the cleats you can see here on the pallet, on the, the bulkhead top, they're all available. Trash cans, there's our depth gauge. Oh, here's a good picture. Now you can see all the, the multiple layers that you want to kind of build up over time of uh, different color greens. And this is that, that light grime. This is the darker grime. This is actually the same color as the copper that I use. I forgot to mention that one. That is, it's a brighter green. Uh, the name of that, here we go. Uh, it is a lush foliage by Craftsmart. That's from Michaels. You can also get away with a Hauser light green Hauser light green, and that's from Deco Art for some of that brighter pop of green at the very top. Here's your barnacles. You can see some of the, the grayer stuff up top with the uh, the darker brown painted down below. There's a nice close up of the depth, water depth there. Oh, here you go. Here's the stars bolts that I, for some reason I love these on the buildings. Um, but these you'll see on some of the older buildings, even some of the new buildings, they still, for some reason, make them into these fancy stars to kind of hold up that second floor of, of uh, the masonry building so the bolts don't come ripping through. There you go. There's, a, there's the track bumper that I designed there. This is all your decking that's included. You don't get track. The railroad tracks are not included. Uh, they're not included in the kit, but pretty much everything else is that you see in this photo here uh, minus the paint yeah provide your own paint there there you go there's your um, scale platform scale all right here's a a uh, reference photo that i use for some of my coloring on my rocks i'll show you this next next week when i'm actually doing the water but you can see how the layers and the levels of water rising up and down cause all these different, you know, horizontal tiers. That's it. Um, if anybody has any questions, let me know. Let me put my camera back. I appreciate all your patience, everybody with your uh, semi-quick pivot that I had to do. There we go. Um, but next week, we'll definitely go by quicker. And thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. Let's see. Anybody else? Great job, as always. Harbor scene. Yep. Thanks, Robert. Uh, like the details and all the tips. No problem. Thanks, Espen. Um, and... Next week will be the water and um, seaweed and doing some rocks. And uh, I'll show you how I'll do all that. That's all next week. And then from there, maybe I'll do one of these a week or one every couple of weeks or something like that. I can move on to copper. I can move on to how I rust all my corrugated materials that we have on our website. Uh, they, they paint up great. It's a nice, heavier cardstock paper that I actually corrugate. Um, but it really rests up nicely. I'll show you that. I do have a how-to on our website. It's called a Mind Mount Minute. We have a few Mind Mount Minutes uh, available on our website, and they will tell you how I, the techniques that I use and the paints that I use to create my rust effects. And um, there's also all of our directions if you want to get an idea of what's included in our kits, uh, which we're going to get into then you can go to mymapmodels.com and look under the kit directions and you can see all of our kits um, except for the sheds. You know, I just realized I don't have the sheds on there, but they're like a, a few hour 
they're real simple. Um, you can see all of our kits up there, the directions and the my mount minutes are helpful. And if any of you have built uh, my mount models kits, send those photos into us for, of your finished kits, and then we can add them to uh, our customer gallery. I love putting those. I love seeing how people change up and, and mash up our, our kits. Um, I'm excited to, to see a Sunrise and a Jason Jensen kit get mashed together soon. That's uh, posting that up on Facebook. So I'm waiting to see how that one turns out by one of our customers. Excited. Alrighty, everybody, you have a great night. I thank you. Check out mymapmodels.com and look for all the good new stuff that's coming out soon. Everybody have a great night. See ya.